In this section, we'll discuss basic concepts related to sets and Venn diagrams. Using Venn diagrams in solving certain types of problems will help us better organize the information that is given to us or available to us and help us in the problem solving process. So let's start with what is a set? A set is a collection of objects. When we look at the first example that we have here in the notes, this is a set of all colors. So we have the braces that tell us that this is a collection of objects. We have the objects listed inside here. The objects are colors. So red, blue, green, orange. The colors are separated by commas. And the dots at the end just tell us that the list goes on and on. So this is how a set is denoted in uh, mathematics. So let's look at the first example. The question says list various sets of numbers uh, using the set notation. So what are numbers? So we have different types of sets of numbers. So our first set is the set of natural numbers. The set of natural numbers is denoted by the letter N, the uppercase N, and it's also called the set of counting numbers. So here we have the set notation for N, the set of natural numbers. We have the braces to tell us that it is a collection of objects. We have the objects inside. The natural numbers, the set of natural numbers, uh, starts with 1. And then we have 2, 3, and so on. So we have commas separating the numbers, and the three dots tell us that uh, the list goes on and on. So the set of natural numbers is the set of numbers starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, and then dot, 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 which tells us that the list goes on and on. Next, let's look at the set of whole numbers. So we have the set of whole numbers denoted by the letter uppercase W. We have the set notation. So the set W is equal to the collection of numbers. So the braces tell us that it's a collection of numbers. And we have the list inside the braces starting with 0 and not 1. So look at the difference between the set of natural numbers and the set of whole numbers. The set of natural numbers starts with 1 and the set of whole numbers starts with 0. That's the only difference between the two sets. So the set of whole numbers is 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, dot, dot. And the numbers are separated by commas and all the numbers are written inside the braces. Now, if we look at the two sets, N and W, do you notice that every number in N sits inside the set W? So if W is the set, then the set of natural numbers sit inside the set of whole numbers. The only number in the set of whole numbers that is not a natural number is 0, and it sits outside the set of natural numbers. So that's the relationship between N and W. So the set N is contained in the set W. Now let's look at the next set, which is a larger set than the set of um, whole numbers. So we are looking at the set of integers. So here we have the set of integers. And look at the set of integers. This is the set notation for the set of integers. It is denoted by the letter uppercase I is equal to the braces which tell us it's a collection of objects and the elements or the members of the set can be listed. So we start with the number 0. 
comma. The set includes plus 1 and minus 1. So when we see plus or minus 1, it means that the number plus 1 and the number minus 1 are both included in the set. We have plus or minus 2, which means plus 2 and minus 2 are included in the set, and the list goes on and on, and that's what the dots tell us. So another way of writing the exact same set is this. We have the braces. We have the dot, 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 which means the list goes on and on to the left. It goes dot, 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 negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then dot, 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 which tells us that the list goes on and on on either side of uh, the numbers, um, um, negative 3 and 3. So both these sets are um, representations of the set of integers. So now let's look at the relationship between the set of integers, which seems to be the largest set so far, the set of whole numbers, and the set of natural numbers. Every natural number... is a whole number, right? 1 is a natural number, it's also a whole number. 2 is a natural number, also a whole number. 3 is a natural number, also a whole number. So every member in N is also a member, every member in N is also a member of W. Now let's look at the relationship between W and the set of integers I. Look at the set of numbers in W. Every one of these numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, and you can imagine what comes next. The pattern goes on and on. Every one of these numbers sitting in W is also in the set of integers. So every member of W is in I. So this the natural numbers are contained in the set of whole numbers and the whole numbers are contained in the set of integers. Now, so far, the set of integers is the largest set. The next larger set is the set of whole numbers. So this is integers, this is whole numbers, and the set of natural numbers sit right inside the smallest set so far. Okay, so let's look at the next set, which is the set of rational numbers. Now, the rational numbers are the numbers that can be written as fractions, positive or negative fractions. They can be written as just any sort of fraction, positive or negative. So, let's look at the set of rational numbers. The set of rational numbers is denoted by Q. The set Q is equal to the set of all numbers that are in the form. So the braces say it's the set of all numbers in the form. P over Q. So anything in the form of a fraction, P over Q. P and Q are both integers. So P is an integer. Q is also an integer. Now, we also need to make sure that Q is not equal to 0. Because if the denominator is equal to 0, then the set is undefined. So, we have any number that can be written as a fraction, uh, positive or negative, because P, the numerator, belongs to the set of integers, and Q, the denominator, belongs to the set of integers. So, let's look at a few examples. So let's look at the first example here, negative two-thirds. Let's check if it belongs to the set of rational numbers. So negative two-thirds can also be written as 2 over negative 3. So negative 2 over 3 is the same as 2 over negative 3. And it's definitely in Q because no matter how we write it, the numerator and the denominator 
So that's the numerator, that's the denominator. Both are integers. So negative 2 is an integer, 3 is an integer. And exactly the same way, if we can write the number as 2 over negative 3, look at the numerator, 2 is an integer, and 3 is an integer. So therefore, 2 over negative 3 is in Q. Let's look at the number negative 3. So negative 3 can be written as a fraction, uh, negative 3 over positive 1, right? So negative 3 over positive 1. 1 is in Q because negative 3 is an integer, uh, positive 1 is an integer, and therefore um, it is in Q. So any number in the form P over Q where P is an integer and Q is an integer um, is a rational number. Now what about 0? Is 0 a rational number? Now the only thing we need to check is can 0 be written as a fraction? P over Q. So 0 is equal to, if you look at this third equation, 0 over 1. So 0 is 0 over 1. 0 is an integer and 1 is an integer. So therefore, 0 over 1 is a rational number. Let's look at example 4. 0.25 is 25 hundredths, which means we can write it as the fraction, 25 over 100. And clearly, the numerator 25 is an integer. The denominator 100 is also an integer. So both are integers. It is written as a fraction. Therefore, it is, an, it is a rational number. Now, this is called a in problem 4, 0 0.25 is called a terminating decimal. A terminating decimal is something that stops, like a 0 0.25 or a 0 0.01 or a 0 0.125. Anything that stops or terminates is called a terminating decimal. Now, how is the decimal in example 5 different? 2.3333, so on, dot, 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 it goes on and on. This decimal number does not terminate. However, it has a pattern. The, the dots after the 3 basically say that the pattern continues, so it's, it's 2.33333, and, and it goes on and on. But it's, it is a non-terminating decimal, but... It is also a recurring decimal. So it's a recurring non-terminating decimal. So a recurring non-terminating decimal can be written as a fraction. So as you can see, 2.33333 is the same as 2 and 1 third, and that is equal to 7 thirds. It is in Q because 7 is an integer and 3 is an integer. So therefore, 7 thirds is a rational number. So the set of all rational numbers, so any fraction, positive or negative, is a rational number. Any whole number or an integer or zero, any one of these numbers is a rational number. In addition, any terminating decimal is a rational number and any non-terminating recurring number is also a rational number. Now, finally, we look at the set of irrational numbers. Now, it's easy to define irrational numbers because irrational numbers are a set of numbers that are not rational. A, set, a number that is not rational is called irrational. So let's quickly run through the list of rational numbers. Any fraction positive or negative is a rational number, any whole number which can also be written as a fraction is a rational number. In addition, rational numbers can be um, terminating decimals or uh, non-terminating recurring uh, decimal numbers. So it's clear that anything that is not a rational number uh, is an irrational number. So what kind of numbers do we have in this set? 
Look at the first example here. So we're looking at these examples of irrational numbers. Non-terminating, non-recurring decimals. So non-terminating, non-recurring decimals are irrational. Radical expressions like radical 2, uh, 3 plus radical 5, all these uh, are, these types of numbers are irrational numbers. In addition, we have example 3, which is numbers such as pi and e that you've come across. You've come across pi. Pi is approximately equal to 3.14. That's only approximately, not exactly. But this number pi is a non-terminating, non-recurring decimal. So it is an irrational number. So these are some important sets of real numbers. So what are real numbers finally? The, the set of real numbers is denoted by this fancy R and it's equal to the set of all rationals along with the set of all irrational numbers. So that is the big set. It's all real numbers that we can imagine. Every number that sits on the number line is a real number. So now we know all types of sets of real numbers.